Okay guys, let's continue with this question. It's absolute sum. Take an array of integers, positive or negative or both, and return the sum of the absolute value of each element. Okay, this looks easy. Let me just delete all of these. Okay, I can just delete all of these as well. Now, what I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna create an array first so I can put my values here and actually let me just copy one of these then say int array let me input those values okay now what I need to do I need to change this to integer then let's just say sum I don't know let's just say sum let's just say int array with an square brackets because we are taking an array as an input so let me call my method in my console right line command so let's just say what did we call this sum yes sum array and let me just write console read line two. now what are we going to write right now we are going to write first integer sum and assign that to zero because I need to get those values sum then I need to do what I need to create a loop why is that because I'm gonna take every value here and add it to my sum and if it's a negative one I'm gonna take it it's absolute value so let me just create a loop let's just say for each and just gonna tap the tab once then copy that array here put it in the collection part then I'm just gonna write my arguments. What are the, my arguments? What are those my arguments? It's that if my item, so basically my value here, is less than zero, so basically if it's a negative, do what? Add some plus my item, but how is it gonna add? It's going to add the absolute value of my item. So basically, I'm getting the absolute value of an of the value of my arrays so if it's not let's just edit normally some plus and equal and item then of course return my sum variable okay it seems like we are done so let me just start this and as you can see we are getting 25 so 3 7 15 and 25 let's just change this to Five, and we are gonna get third. Change this to minus three. We are gonna get thirty-two, and you can see we are getting thirty-two as a result, guys. So let's move on to the next question. Okay, for our next question, it says to the power of blank. So create a function that takes a base number and an exponent number and returns the calculation. Okay, this is an easy one. Let's just create. Let me just delete all of this. We are just going to write pow, basically, matpow. So let me just delete all of these as well. We're going to create what? A base, base input and then power input, right? So we're going to create two inputs. So basically, I'm just going to write double base, let's just say 10, and double pow, and let's just say 10 as well. Then I need to write those in my console right line. I'm just gonna write sum. Let's just send base and pow. Then I need to write console read line, of course. Then I'm just gonna take these two variables here. So let me just write double base and double pow. Then what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to create a double function here to get the result of these. So I'm just going to write double number, let's just say number, equals to what? Equals to literally the power of this number. So basically, I'm just going to write max, pow, going to write the base here and the pow here. And we should be getting our result now. Of course, I need to change to double, of course. Now, 
let's execute our program and as you can see we are getting the 10 to the power of 10 let's just write 2 and 5 so we can get 32 and as you can see we have the result of 32 here now let's move on to our next question okay for the next question we have multiply by length create a function to multiply all of the values in an array by the amount of values in the given array so what are we going to do okay we are going to multiply by each of these values by the length of this array so in this example it's multiplied by 4 for each value okay let me just copy this actually then come here delete all of these and I'm sending an error right yes I'm sending array so I need to change this to integer array then of course I need to delete all of these and all of these as well I need to create an integer array here first and assign it these values to it then send my array to my sum method then I'm just gonna take it from here let's just say int array here now what are we going to do first we are going to create an fake array class why is that because I don't want to mess with this array I don't want to play with this array I'm just gonna copy all of these items in my fake array then or basically I'm just gonna copy all of these items multiply by the length of this array in my fake array then I'm just gonna return that fake array so let's create the fake array one fake array and let's say new integer the length of this array so basically array length now what are we going to do now we're going to create an loop so let's just say for int i equals zero i smaller than array length or fake array length it doesn't matter they have the same length and a plus plus then what are we going to do we're going to assign these values in these values multiply by the length of this array so let me just write fake array i assigned by array i multiplied by arrays or fake arrays length then we are going to return our fake array here return fake oh whoops I need to return it from there return fake array and of course we are returning an array so I can't call it like this or basically I can't write it like this how am I going to write it first I can just assign this to a fake array as well so let me just write fake or not there fake array and let's just call my method function here so this array get assigned to my this fake array let's just say some array here then we can just print this array by for each loop let's just copy this and paste it in the collection part and let's just write console write bind curly brackets zero curly brackets the space between and write item okay we should be good now let's start this program and actually let me delete this line part and as you can see we multiplied each value by 4 here and actually let me put another value in there let me put 5 so it's going to multiply each value by 5 each item by 5 and as you can see we have 10 to multiply by 5 equals 10 15 5 and 25 for the 5 guys now let's move on to our next question okay for this question it says return the factorial create a function that takes an integer and returns the factorial of that integer that's it the, that is the integer multiplied by all positive lower integers so technically we are taking a factorial of a number okay nice easy enough let me just delete all of these and all of these and create an integer n and let's just say it goes to 10 now let's just write console right line and call our method in there what was our method it's sum and basically and we're going to delete this 
array part, so basically square brackets. And let's just say end here. Then I'm gonna do what? First, I'm gonna create an integer called fact. So I'm just gonna write fact one, so I can contain all of my factorial values in there. So let me just write fact equals one. Then I'm gonna create a loop, of course, so I can multiply the values of i with this fact number. So let me just create int i equals one. Of course, I can just start with the zero because if I do. I'm just going to get the result of 0 every time. So I'm going to do what? i smaller and equal than n. Why? Because we, we are starting at 1, not 0. So we are writing that equal as well. Now we are increasing our i value. Then we are multiplying i fact by i. And we are doing what? We are returning our factorial. So we should be good right now. What are we going to do? This is going to get 10 from here, it's going to multiply 1 by 1 by 1, and it's going to get our factorial here. And as you can see, we are getting our factorial here. And actually, let me change this to smaller number, so we can confirm it. So, as you can see, we are getting 6, 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3, we are getting the value of 6 here, guys. Now, let's move on to our next question.